We have been following a developing story out in New York City. A five alarm apartment fire killed at least 19 people, including nine children. At least 63 people have been hurt. It started on the third floor of the 19th story federal housing complex and is being called the deadliest fire in three decades. Joining us now is Representative Richie Torres. He's from the 15th Congressional District in New York, which covers the South Bronx. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Representative Richie, you're a New Yorker through and through. These are your people, your district. Can you give us an update this morning? It is the deadliest fire that we've seen in more than three decades since the Happy Land fire in, in 1990. You know, the two highest values that most of us have are our family and our home. Uh, and I have constituents who have seen the world around them collapse, who have lost their children, who have lost their homes. And so the impact, the level of trauma is incalculable. Uh, the fire originated from a malfunctioning electric heater in a duplex in the third floor of a 19-story high rise known as Twin Parks Northwest. And even though the fire itself was largely limited to the third floor, both the apartment door and the nearby stairwell door were left open, causing the smoke to spread widely and rapidly throughout the building. And so since the smoke, since the building had no fire escapes and since smoke was filling the stairwells, the tenants had no means of escape. The, too many tenants became either seriously ill or died from severe smoke inhalation uh, from cardiac and respiratory arrest. Uh, and so for me, the, the lessons learned here are twofold. First, be careful with the use of these space heaters, which can be an extreme fire hazard. And second, in the event of a fire, it is vital to close the door because closing the door means preventing the spread of smoke and fire conditions throughout a building. I know it's still very early in the investigation, but do we know why the doors were left open? That is the unanswered question at the heart of the investigation. Property management claims that these doors were compliant with the local fire code, were self-closing. Uh, but if, if these doors were self-closing, then why were both the apartment door and the stairwell door left open? Because if those doors had been closed, uh, then it would have kept the smoke from spiraling upward through the stairwell. And just this morning, we're hearing reports that, that residents were saying that those alarms were malfunctioning at times, and that's why some of them maybe were reluctant to sort of heed the warning. Have you heard anything in that regard? I've heard conflicting reports. So we're awaiting the final results of the fire marshal's investigation. Um, I've heard from tenants that the fire alarms would go off so frequently that they would be ignored as false alarms. Uh, but the fire commissioner did indicate that the initial call about the fire from the building was based on a tenant who had heard the smoke alarm. So we've received conflicting reports about the effectiveness of the fire and smoke alarm system. Let's talk about these families. I mean, as a parent, it's the worst case scenario, losing a child. What resources are available for these families right now? We have established a service center near Twin Parks Northwest, which will connect these residents to services. Uh, the residents who are displaced in the short term have been relocated to hotels near their home in the Bronx. And for those residents who have been displaced for the long run, those living on the third floor where the fire originated, uh, we are intent on securing permanent housing for them. So we're gonna provide these families with whatever support that they need to overcome what is likely the greatest tragedy in their lives. We know last week nine children died in a fire in Philly, and we know about, of course, the tra tragic events of yesterday. How do we better educate people on what to do when a fire breaks out in their building? Part of it is cultural. We have to foster a culture of fire safety in America. We have to impress upon people the importance of, of closing doors and avoiding the use of space heaters that pose a fire hazard. But part of the problem is structural. Uh, the housing stock in communities of color uh, tends to be much older. Twin Parks dates back to the 1970s. Uh, the Bronx has buildings that predate World War I, and these buildings tend to lack what I would consider 21st century standards of fire safety. Not every building has a sprinkler system. Not every building has a fire alarm or a smoke alarm system. Not every building has self-closing doors. 
And so the tenants who live in these buildings are at much greater risk of facing a catastrophic fire because of their living conditions. And the deeper problem here is systemic disinvestment from communities of color and from affordable housing. And you mentioned the sprinkler systems. There have been reports that there potentially was an issue with those. Are there any new developments on that front? Uh, I'm not aware of issues with the, the sprinkler system, but you know, keep in mind that the main cause of death was not the fire itself, it was the smoke. Uh, so the fire never spread beyond the third floor, but the smoke, because the doors were left open, spread widely throughout the building and once the smoke began filling the stairwells, the tenants had no means of escape. And we have just a few more seconds. What's the next step in this investigation and how are you gonna make sure that we hold the powerful accountable? I have four objectives. One, to ensure that the residents have access to services. Two, that the short-term residents have the ability to return to their homes as quickly as possible. Three, that the long-term displaced have access to affordable housing. And fourth, my colleagues and I are going to examine what policies have to be put in place to improve fire safety, not only in the Bronx, but throughout the country, because every American deserves safe, decent, affordable housing. Representative Richie Torres, thank you so much for joining us here on Start Your Day.